With a Borgo XR Series Harrow hooked up behind the tractor, you're able to extend the range of field conditions you can be effective in. This is because the XR Series Harrows have a unique design, offering the operator three distinct and independent adjustments. You could have an XR 750 or 770, an XR 751 or 771, or an XR 851 or 871. You could be 70 feet wide, 90 feet wide, or 110 feet wide. On all of the models and variations, the adjustments are the same. This video is going to focus on the XR8 series, but most of the tips are easily applied to the XR7. The three adjustments include the section angle, the tine angle, and the adjustable downforce, or ADF. When you're hooking up to the Harrows, take a moment to check the hydraulic circuit decal near the hitch. On an XR8, there will be three hydraulic circuits, one to adjust the section angle, one to adjust the ADF, and the third circuit controls the boom wheels, which are used for folding and unfolding, the tine angle, and the hydraulic latches, which secure the solid pull arms. If you're operating an XR750 or 770, you may have three hydraulic circuits, and you may have four if your unit is equipped with the hydraulic jack option. The circuits supply the same three adjustments to the cab, but they're laid out a little differently. You'll have the transport circuit, which controls the section angle and boom wheels, the ADF circuit, and the tine angle circuit. You'll see the same layout on the early model XR751s and 771s, except that the hydraulic jack circuit will also operate the hydraulic latches, since this is the point where the Harrows began receiving the updated solid pull arms instead of the cable pulls. If you have a late model XR751 or 771, you'll have four hydraulic circuits the section angle circuit, the ADF circuit, the boom wheel and tine angle circuit, and the latch and jack circuit. The specifics of how the Harrows are making the adjustments isn't particularly important when discussing operation, but hooking up the Harrows properly is. First, make sure that the Harrow is level. With the Harrow unhooked, adjust the leveling jacks until you're satisfied. Measure the height of the tractor hitch and set the harrow hitch to the appropriate height. If the harrow is in the field and not leveled, the adjustments aren't going to work as expected and the end result is going to be affected. Now that you've identified your model and you've leveled it, and you've taken the time to hook up the hydraulics, it's time to get those harrows into field position. Remember, this is an XR8 and the steps are slightly different in the XR7 series. Your operator's manual will confirm the proper steps, and so will your quick reference guide, or QRG. To begin, use the tractor remote that you have hooked to the ADF circuit to lift up the individual harrow sections. They should already be lifted fully, but it's always good to verify that they haven't settled during transportation. Pull out the lock pins from the mainframe. and the boom wheel locations, four pins in total. Curtis from Burgo Farms will show us the rest of the process. We're gonna unfold this 871 Harrow. So first thing we're gonna do is move those back tires. So it's just on the tine angle hydraulic, which is also the latches. So we'll see those latches move and then we'll see those back tires start to come in a bit. Once they've turned a little bit, we'll put it in reverse and start backing up nice and even. So once they latch together, just stop. Now we're gonna turn those tires Point straight ahead. Now, 
once there straight ahead. We're gonna lower down the harrow. Then we can activate the down pressure on those arrows. So you'll see all the sections go down. Then we're ready to go. Curtis mentions the hydraulic latches during his XR unfolding demonstration. Those latches are a critical component of the harrow. When the hydraulic latch cylinder is fully retracted, then the latch is secure. The picture on the screen shows the hydraulic latch fully secured. If the hydraulic latch isn't fully secured, then the solid toe arm may be released when the harrows are moved, which could cause severe damage. On an XR8, the hydraulic latches share a circuit with both the tine angle and the boom wheels. When unfolding the harrow, the hydraulic latch cylinders should retract prior to the boom wheels turning, allowing the solid toe arms to click into place. If the latch cylinders don't retract before the boom wheels turn, Speak to your Burgo dealership before continuing operation. Before harrowing, let's discuss the available adjustments in more detail. Let's begin with the section angle. The section angle adjustment is made using the hydraulic circuit marked in white heat shrink. The hydraulic circuit extends and retracts the large transport cylinders. The section angle setting is shown on the indicator closest to the tractor. When section angle adjustments are made, you're changing where the straw is being carried in the harrow section. If the indicator is showing one, then the straw is going to be carried at the rear of the harrow section. This will likely be an appropriate setting for dry straw conditions and will minimize straw and stubble destruction. If the indicator is showing five, then the straw is being carried throughout the entire section. This could be a good setting for maximum straw breaking in dry conditions. If the indicator is showing 10, then the straw is being carried at the front of the section. This could be a good setting for damper conditions, as well as for maximum soil disturbance, such as drying or incorporation. The tine angle adjustment is made using the hydraulic circuit marked in orange heat shrink. The hydraulic circuit extends or retracts the tine angle cylinders. The tine angle adjustment has a 45 degree range and is shown on the indicator furthest from the tractor. If the indicator is showing one, then the tines are going to be laid back 45 degrees. In this position, the least amount of straw will be carried and it's the least aggressive position. If the indicator is showing 10, then the tines are standing straight up and down. In this position, the largest amount of straw is being carried, and it's the most aggressive position. The adjustable downforce, or ADF, is adjustable from the cab, but not from a tractor remote like the section angle and tine angle. It is possible to adjust ADF from the ADF manifold on the cart, but by having a control box installed in the cab of the tractor, adjustments can be made during active operation. If you're adjusting ADF at the cart, take the time to check your operator's manual where all of the necessary steps are laid out. Depending on the model you have, you may have a Model 415 control box or, like the one shown here, a Model 500. If you have a Model 415 control box, check out your quick reference guide for the operational basics and, if you want even more details, check out your operator's manual. The tractor remote connected to the ADF circuit, the hoses marked in red heat shrink, must be engaged while harrowing. If the ADF remote isn't engaged, then the harrow sections aren't going to be able to float or contour properly over high and low spots, and there could potentially be significant damage. By making adjustments to the ADF circuit through the control box, you're changing the amount of force that is being applied on each harrow section. Think of it as increasing or decreasing the weight of the harrow sections. There's three operating modes available, downforce, float, 
and up force. When you're applying down force, the ADF cylinders are retracted and additional force is pushing down on the Harrow sections. The number displayed on the control box is the hydraulic circuit pressure, so as the downward force is increased, the PSI reading is also increased. The more downward force, the more aggressive the Harrow becomes. When in float, select the mode through the control box. Remember, the tractor remote must be fully engaged for the Harrow sections to contour properly. In the float operating mode, the only downward force being applied is the weight of the Harrows themselves. The harrowing action is now less aggressive than it is with downforce applied. When in the upforce operating mode, the system is reversing which side of the cylinder the pressure is being applied to, which has the effect of removing weight from the section. The number displayed on the control box is the hydraulic circuit pressure, so as the upward force is increased, the PSI reading is also increased. The more upward force applied, the less aggressive the harrow becomes. Remember, the PSI reading on the control box increases as force is applied, regardless of the direction that the force is applied in. When operating an up force, a maximum pressure of 400 to 500 PSI should be observed. Applying more up force will cause the harrow sections to lift, at which point the tines won't be in contact with the ground. Now that we've covered the three adjustments, let's take a quick moment to discuss the control box operation. Here's Curtis from Burgo Farms again, showing the control box in action. Our control box is a model 500, so you can adjust your down force on it. Arrows up or down. Uh, the other really neat feature with our ADF adjustable down force is we can also click it to up force. And so it actually takes weight off of the sections. That can become really handy if you're trying to just move some straw and not get too much uh, soil incorporated in there with the straw. Let's discuss the control box in a little more detail. Remember, additional information is available in the operator's manual. The right toggle is the on and off switch, while the left toggle is used to select between downforce and upforce. Check that your control box is ready to go by entering the settings page. Confirm that XR Harrows is selected, adjust the brightness to your preference, and choose your preferred control mode. If your Model 500 control box screen doesn't look like this, it means you're operating with a different software version. You can talk to your Burgo dealership about it, but in the meantime, make sure to check out your operator's manual for specific details. The open loop symbol indicates Pulse Width Modulation Power Control, or PWM. The closed loop symbol indicates Pressure Control Mode, which is the recommended operating mode. For more information on PWM, consult your operator's manual. In pressure control mode, you're choosing the ADF circuit pressure. The ADF pressure is going to be as consistent as possible, even when field conditions are changing. In the center of the screen is the measured pressure, which will match the pressure gauge on the ADF hydraulic block on the cart. If you press inside this circle, you will engage the system and the circle will turn green. Press it again to disengage, and the ring will turn gray. When the ring is gray, the harrow is operating in float. When the ring is green, the harrow is operating in downforce or upforce, depending on that left-hand toggle. The smaller number displayed above the measured pressure is the target pressure. This is set by the operator using the large up and down arrows, and this is the pressure that the harrow is attempting to maintain. The two smaller circles on the screen are set points. By touching either circle, that number becomes the target pressure. Setting these set points allows you to rapidly change between different pressures, which you may want to do, for example, while on headlands. To set the set points, start by using the large up and down arrows until the target pressure is displaying your desired set point. Once it is, press and hold the set point button until done flashes above the measured pressure. If you choose PWM power control mode, your target and set points are going to be displayed as a percentage. In this mode, the ADF pressure shown in the center will change as field conditions change. 
adjusting the target percentage and set point percentages is the exact same process. Borgo has developed a settings guide, but it is important to understand that the guide is intended only as a starting point and not as a black and white formula for success. The guide allows for appropriate settings to be chosen for starting out, and then it's up to the operator to fine tune for field conditions. For an example, let's say you want to spread some canola straw. You determine that the straw is dry. You set your tine angle indicator at five and your section angle indicator to two. You place your control box into downforce mode and the target pressure is set at 400 PSI. As you progress in the field, you'll have to make adjustments until the field finish is meeting your expectations. Maybe the straw was tougher than you thought and you need to lower your tine angle setting or increase your section angle setting. Instead of that, maybe you need to lower the downforce, changing your target pressure to 200 PSI. Make small adjustments and only make one adjustment at a time. Observe the results and then try something else if necessary. Use the settings chart to help make adjustment decisions until you become more familiar with the operation of an XR Harrow. By focusing on the tine angle setting, we can see that as the tine angle setting moves higher up the indicator, the harrowing action becomes more aggressive. The same is true of the ADF setting. As the section angle setting moves higher on the indicator, however, the less aggressive the harrowing action becomes. As with learning any new piece of equipment, take the time to familiarize yourself with the equipment. Read the operator's manual and keep the quick reference guide in the cap of the tractor. If the harrow is leaving lumps and you've exhausted the adjustments available to you, you may have to wait until field conditions are more suitable. The XR harrows make it possible to work in an extended range of conditions, not all conditions. The final step is to fold the harrows from field position into transport position. Turn off the control box and reverse the tractor remote for the ADF circuit to raise all of the harrow sections. Failure to completely raise the harrow sections could result in substantial damage. Using the tractor remote attached to the boom angle circuit, roll the boom fully upwards. Using the tractor remote attached to the tine angle boom wheel latch circuit, turn the boom wheels into transport position and fully open the latches. Drive forward slowly to fold the harrow. Install the lock pins in the main frame and boom wheel locations. And the harrow is ready for road transport. Additional information on hydraulic circuit layouts, folding and unfolding instructions, even settings tips can all be found in the quick reference guide and the operator's manual. They both contain critical operations information, service instructions, and safety tips. Thanks for checking out the XR Harrows operation video. For more information on XR Series Harrows, along with other great Burgo products, check out Burgo's YouTube channel. For links to some of the documents mentioned in this video, check the video description. Happy harrowing!